You know, the word grace, when I became a Christian, it was such a simple word. You know? It was such a simple concept. It was encapsulated by the song Jesus you know, uh, saves, tell the nations. You know? Jesus saves, tell the nations. That's as simple as that. But for some reason, today, grace has become a very explosive word, okay? even in Christian circles. And uh, there is a minefield for us to navigate. Galatians, what we're experiencing today is no different from the world that Paul writes to the Galatians. All right? And uh, it's probably around the AD uh, 48, 49, around that time. Yeah? And it is uh, something like about 30 years you know, in his ministry. Paul had gone from one end of the uh, Roman world to the other. But to just recap, to help us recap a little bit, we're preaching on this series, what we call the Gospel of Grace, Galatians. Right? And uh, and I pray that you will, we, and we're going to cover it for two months, yeah, in the, in this month of February and the month of March, and hopefully, as we read through and study the full counsel of God, that we have a better understanding of the power of grace in our lives. Okay? Now it's not an easy subject to deal with, and Paul have to correct a lot of misunderstanding. And sometimes when we hear pastors, preachers, you know, teachers of the Bible uh, just preach on selective passages in the book of Galatians and in the, other, in the Bible, we only get a small picture of what it is. But I pray that for us as a church, we would systematically read through the Bible for ourselves. Amen? Can you make a commitment to the Lord yeah, that you will read through the book of Galatians? And along the way, you know, if you have questions, raise it up in your cell group. Uh, raise it up with, you know, uh, with uh, the pastoral team and, 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 uh, and talk to one another. You know? It is great you know, when you have discussion okay? and under specific understanding of the word of God. Uh, yesterday at our cell group at Airport Road group, you know, uh, uh, this uh, 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 Franco was leading us in the study of first ver first ten verses, uh, first ten verses. Wow, he sounds like a pastor Lee, okay, <laughs> Pastor Franco Lee. <laughs> okay, they were so excited about the study. You know, it's it's always nice, you know, actually to be able to reflect and discuss in a bigger group in a in a setting, and to really ask difficult questions, yeah, and to generally seek the word. The word of the Lord. Amen. So I cannot invite us to, to just to, uh, turn to the book of Galatians. Yeah. And uh, before we read the passage we are going to study today, I just want to do a brief recap. To ask, you know, last week we asked one one question: What kind of gospel? Okay. Uh, today our message is what kind of messenger. Next next week we'll look at what kind of welcome. Maybe in time also with, with for Chinese New Year, yeah. And uh, what kind of faith would be the fourth message uh, uh, in this series for this month? And Paul, in his uh, in his uh, uh, ministry over thirty years, as I mentioned, have planted many churches throughout the Roman Empire, and he preached the gospel among the provinces he preached was in Galatia, in Asia, in Macedonia, in Achaia, you know, northern and southern Greece, yeah, all those areas. And normally, he would send, uh, after his visits and after his time with the churches, he would send letters back to them to encourage them, sometimes to teach them, sometimes to correct them. And the book of Galatians is a letter that is written to this group of churches, probably in the southern province yeah, of Galatia. Yeah? And uh, might be a collection of about four churches. Uh, that's why it's called to the churches, the Ecclesia, uh, in, the book, uh, in, uh, in, in Galatia. Yeah? And there are probably about four cities if you're interested in geography. You know, Antioch is one of them. Uh, Pisidian, uh, Iconium, Lystra, actually, and there's another one called Delphus. And he probably founded these churches in his first missionary journey. 
But what is gospel? What kind of gospel we covered in the last week? And as a recap, I just like to point us to the first uh, uh, verse, chapter one, verse three to five. Next slide, please. Thanks. Is this? Let us read together from the NIV. In if you have grace and peace to you from our God, our Father, and the Lord Jesus Christ, who gave Himself for our sins to rescue us from the present evil age, according to the will of God and Father, to whom be glory forever and ever. Amen. Someone put it very nicely, and it's helpful to remember what is grace. It is God's riches at Christ's expense. Yeah? Yeah. It is God's unmerited favor. And if you will look at that passage, you know, these two verses, two or three verses, we can see that we can find peace with God when we understand grace. Yeah? We, can, uh, we cannot have the peace of God we can if we do not have peace with God. And that is vital for every person. You know, every person who realizes that, you know, Come to the fact to the, the fact that we accept that we are sinners, yeah? and we need a savior, and that's where peace comes in when we receive the good news of grace. We find that in here it is a, a, it is a relational issue with God our Father. This is peace from God our Father and our Lord Jesus Christ. Even the Lord, you know, uh, 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 in the Greek word it's called Kyrios, you know, in the, in the Hebrew word is is actually Adonai, and actually, because the Hebrew use the word Lord, because they don't want to pronounce the name of God, Yahweh, and actually this is Yahweh, you can tra easily translate it uh, from God our Father and Yahweh, Lord Jesus Christ. You know? But this is relational, it is not a religion. It is not a ritual. We are here every Sunday is because we want to come into the presence of God. We want to enjoy His presence. We want to receive His love. We want to bless His name. We want to listen to Him. We want to talk to Him. We want to express the desires of our hearts to Him. Here is a God who listens to you and I. Isn't that great? Like just now, you know, uh, uh, what is this, uh, uh, Brother Yap, you know, uh, Elder Yap uh, read uh, uh, that, that, that wonderful passage about God the Creator. But some religions say God is very impersonal. Yeah, he is a creator and he leaves creation behind. Uh, let you go on your own. Yeah, you, you, you do your own thing. I do my own thing, God says. You know? But no, the God of the Bible, the Bible reveals has a relation with God. So, when I studied this, I realized many times we come to God, we have many things in between us and God. That's why I share this now. Don't let people, don't let problems, don't let circumstances stand in the way between you and God. You know? Don't have a, a, a dear brother uh, in Christ said, don't have a third party between you and God. Amen? Right? And let God deal with the other issues. Come to Him daily. But if you look at the character or the characteristics see, of the gospel, you can find that I've listed it down you know, in, in this way. You can find that it's divine in its authority, in its origin. Yeah? The Lord Jesus Christ has a divine standing. You know? It is devoted. It shows about the devotion of God, of the Lord, in sacrificial love. He sacrificed Himself. He laid down His life for you and I. He shed His blood to purchase you, to redeem you from the clutches, from the grip of Satan and sin. He yeah. was devoted to you. It was decisive. Decisive because it says, to, to, he gave himself for our sins. That means at the cross, another scripture say, you know, that that 
that he has dealt with our sins once for all. Okay? There's no other sacrifice left for sin. And Hebrews 10.10 10 says this, By that will, you know, the will of God, we have been made holy. When you come to worship God, do you see, how do you see yourself? I remember a pastor friend of mine, uh, many years ago, when I was a young Christian, he was sharing, uh, uh, that was in Sydney. He, he, was, he was saying that as we were worshipping, he saw himself so unclean. But then, suddenly, he, God gave him an image of the blood of Christ covering, you know, flowing down and then washing him white as snow. And not only for him, but the each and every person in the congregation of the church. You have been made holy through the sacrifice of the body of Christ once for all. Once for all. It is a deliverance. It is a rescue us. It is a rescue mission from this evil age. Over the last year and even now, even now recently, this last two, you know, there's evil upon evil. Yeah? You can see the barbarity. You know, as if the Second World War, the Nazi uh, uh, the, the incarceration uh, and the massacre of the Jews is coming back again. See? Evil will not, not let its grip go of this world. Second world. It is his kingdom. And this is the season now. You can see evil rising up. And we are in this present evil age. And indeed, you know, our elder Kokma read from Psalm 35. We read it again. You know, when we are faced with that kind of things, we are faced with injustice, when we, 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 we grieve, you know, when we see uh, uh, scores of people massacred, you know, in the case, it, uh, for whatever cause it may be, by militants, by, by extremists, by whatever, when words are hurled, you know, at each other, even in our, in our country, it's because we are of a different race, a different religion, different uh, uh, likes, dislikes, whatever. It is a sad world. But we, my friends, you and I have the gospel of peace. That's what makes Christians stand up. We don't need to participate in the evil of this world. Can I hear, have an amen? Yeah, okay. You, you are being rescued, okay? So, you know, it's a deliverance. And finally, we take hope, we take encouragement because it is the desire of God. You know? It's not something we are man concocted. It is not something we dream out and say, we it's wishful thinking. No, it comes and originates from the will of God. According to the will of our God and Father. To God be the glory. So the Lord is not slow. You know, when we see this age, you know, right? The Lord is not slow in keeping His promise, as some understand slowness. Instead, He is patient with you. you know, Peter said this, He is patient with you. Not wanting anyone to perish, but everyone to come to repentance. We must you see, the gospel is not just about the feel good factor. The gospel looks at the needs, the sins, the brokenness of your life and my life, paints it realistically, sheds the light of God upon our need. Then only we can cry out to say, We cannot save ourselves. We need a Savior. That's the gospel. We need a Savior. Everyone needs to come to repentance, to turn back to God. You see, it, this is a mission critical message for this world. And the question we want to ask today is with this kind of important critical, weighty, whatever other message. Okay? What kind of man okay, does God choose to convey this good news? 
are there certain characteristics, you know, that will allow, you know, this message of peace to reach into a hurting and broken world? And this is where I like to invite us to turn and read from Galatians chapter one. Okay. And just for for sake of uh, flow and continuity, I just like to first read from verse one. Okay, Galatians chapter one, verse one and two. Then I'll skip to verse uh, uh, nine uh, onwards. Uh, that, there's a slight overlap, right, from previous message. Paul. If you have your NIV, please read together with me. Yeah? Okay. Paul, an apostle, sent not from men, nor by men, but by Jesus Christ and God the Father, who raised him from the dead, and all the brothers with him, the churches in Galatia. Please keep with me down to uh, verse 9. As we have already said, so now I say again, if anyone is preaching to you a gospel other than what you accepted, let him be eternally condemned. Am I now trying to win the approval of man or of God? Or am I trying to please man? If, we, if I was still trying to please man, I would not be a servant of Christ. Verse 11. I want you to know, brothers, that the gospel I preach is not something that man made up. I did not receive it from any man, nor was I taught it. Rather, I received it by revelation from Jesus Christ. For you have heard of my previous way of life in Judaism, how intensely I persecuted the church of God and tried to destroy it. I was advancing in Judaism beyond many Jews of my own age and was extremely zealous for the traditions of my fathers. But when God, who, let, who set me apart from birth and called me by His grace, was pleased to reveal His Son in me so that I might preach Him from the Gentile, uh, among the Gentiles, I did not consult any man, verse 17, nor did I go up to Jerusalem to see those who were apostles before I was. But I went immediately into Arabia and later returned to Damascus, verse 18. Then after three years, I went up to Jerusalem to get acquainted with Peter, or Cephas, and stayed with him for 15 days. I saw none of the other apostles, only James, the Lord's brother. And I assure you before God, what I'm writing to you is no lie. Later, I went to Syria and Cilicia. I was personally unknown to the churches of Judea that are in Christ. They only heard the report. The man who was formerly persecuting us is now preaching the faith he once tried to destroy. And they praise God because of me. Shall we just pause and pray? Humbly Father, we come and just to ask that you would bless the meditation of our hearts. Grant us insight and wisdom, O Lord. We do pray and also ask that you give us, uh, uh, enable us and empower us to yield our spirit to you, O God. To listen to your word, to be attentive to what your spirit is saying to each and every one of us. So I also pray that the words of my lips will be acceptable in your sight. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. As we read Galatians, we find that Paul, you know, uh, is, doesn't do his lengthy or usual uh, introduction. He went straight to his point. You know? He said that I was appalled, I was uh, amazed you know, that you're turning away from the gospel. So he wrote in uh, specifically to correct a problem. But the only problem is this, when we read any letter, it's like hearing, you know, you ever, let's say your, 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 your sister, your brother, your wife, your husband is talking on the phone, alright? You cannot hear the other person on the other side speaking, okay, unless you're on speakerphone, right? Okay, but you're only hearing what your, your friend is speaking, but in your mind, you are trying to decipher and think about what the other side is speaking. You know, speaking. So when you read the letter of Galatians, 
you do not know what is the issue that the Galatian church have actually the letters or the feedback that they have given to Paul. You can only try and decipher back, you know, work backwards. You are being like a uh, private investigator, uh, CSI, you know, <laughs> okay, all right, okay, crime scene in investigator, yeah, to go back and deduce what was the actual issue. So, so some of the observation we make is more of a deduction of what we observe from what Paul is writing. See, we find that after his power pack, you know, a short but power pack greeting, Paul goes immediately to identify and address the problem. We see that in verse six, and and uh, he, he he even uh, uh, said that if the problem is so serious, okay, that if anyone preaches the false uh, uh, an alternative gospel, he pronounces a double curse on them. See, so we see that there are false teachers from this, yeah, that has infiltrated into the churches in Galatia, and they are with their godful false gospel. Okay? But what happened in order to promote their teaching, they have to first undermine the foundation of Paul's teaching. How do you undermine the, the foundation of Paul's teaching? What they do is they try to do two things. One, is to discredit Paul's credentials. Yeah? And secondly, it is to discredit, okay, go back uh, a little bit, I haven't got to my point one first. Okay? To discredit Paul's motives. Okay? Discredit Paul's motives. In verse 1, that's why Paul puts down his uh, puts his foot down and says, I, you know, Paul, an apostle. He put down his apostolic authority. We covered that last Sunday, right? Because they have tried to spread rumors of that Paul was really not an apostle. After all, he was not among the twelve, you know, who walked with Jesus. But Paul said, you know, later on, he says that, I, Jesus himself revealed, revealed himself to me. I had a personal encounter with the Lord. Okay? Secondly, they tried to discredit Paul's motives. You see, in verse 10, if we read, it says, Am I now trying to win the approval of man or of God? Am I trying to please man? It seems to suggest that the, the false teachers is saying, You are making the gospel, believing the, uh, uh, becoming a Christian too easy. How can you get right with God? By just faith. Surely something is missing. So then they say, No, it's not right. Paul is trying to uh, to have a popularity vote. You know? He's going to try to make things easy for the Gentiles to, to, to come to God. And so he's watering down the gospel. He's removing other requirements. You know? And they begin to say, ah, this what you hear from Paul, the gospel, is not really the complete gospel. I, I mean, there are churches sometimes that you see, uh, uh, I mean, in Miri, you've got the Sarawak full gospel as another church. Uh, you've got our friends and uh, FGM, full gospel assembly. Yeah, okay. Uh, uh, should we call ourselves the full gospel uh, Baptist church? <laughs> okay, all right. What is the full gospel? You know? You know? Is it something you add on, you know, more things? And uh, we won't go into the details of what the Judaizers, uh, uh, this group of false teachers is teaching at this moment. We'll cover it later on. But they are suggesting to Paul that, yeah, Paul uh, point himself as an apostle. For, uh, Paul's motive was just to build, you know, uh, up a, a following of people. He watered down the gospel to make it more appealing. So he is a people pleaser. Yeah? And that's what Paul writes in verse 10. Am I now trying to win the approval of human beings or of God? Um, going in, into that, let's go into verse 9 and 10. As we look at this, the first thing, we find that Paul's conscience was clear. See? Have a clear conscience. When you receive the gospel, right? first of all, and the gospel has the power to clear your conscience. I can remember the first time, you know, when I, uh, the time that I received Christ into my life, I believed in the Lord. I was under such a heavy burden, yeah, uh, realizing that my, uh, 
you know, my, my shortcomings, my mistakes, my sin, you know, and all those things. Yeah? As, as a young student in, in the first year of the university. But when the, the day that, uh, and that I received the gospel, I believe in, in, in Christ you know, uh, and as my Savior and as my Lord, I can feel the burden lifted up. And my, you know, the peace of God was on me. But even more so, I find that suddenly my conscience becomes sharper. You know? What was like, I thought these gray areas, I said, no, this is not right in the eyes of God. This is right, this is not right. You know, suddenly God, you know, our conscience, if we're not careful, it becomes seared, you know, it's like an iron that, that presses on uh, into your, your, in your nice clothing and becomes, you know, burnt black, you know, and becomes dead, you know, to right and wrong. You know, there is no longer any moral absolute. Yeah, yeah, well, and, and you, you do, you know, everything you, th you think is right in your sight. That was the degradation. Yeah? That was the, the fall of the, of the nation of Israel in the book of Judges. Yeah? Every man, there was a very sad ending. Every man did what he think was right in the sun. Yeah? Yeah? No absolutes. But the moment you receive the gospel, somebody received the gospel, suddenly there's an awakening. There's a, a, as if your, your, your conscience, your mind is taken out, you know? uh, uh, taken out and then washed clean, you know? scrubbed clean. You know? Use a beam, you know, or jeep, you know, whatever you call it, yeah, okay, with a brush, you know, and then uh, and then put it back, you know, yeah, and the and the and the washing powder uh, is the blood of Christ, yeah, okay. So so your conscience is made clear, uh, clear. Okay? But Paul's in this case, you know, his conscience was clear by the way that he said this, you know, uh, he pronounced a double curse on the false teachers. So anyone who preaches a god different gospel is a curse, yeah. He said, by doing so, he said, that, I'm not here to please men. You know? he, said, he, said, he said this, if he were to please people, then he would give in to the teachings of the false teachers. Right? If he was a people pleaser, okay, if he wants to win the approval of everyone, he would be trying not to offend anyone. He would not be pronouncing any curse. Right? He would not be pointing out sin. Okay. So, if you look, if you look at Paul's letters, he points it up, right and wrong. Okay, but he does it in the right spirit. Okay, he does it you know, not to, not to uh, put a person down to despair, but to draw them back to the, to experience the mercy and the grace of God. So don't be afraid, my dear friends. You know, my friends. When somebody corrects you, young people, yeah, please know that they are not rejecting you. Do you understand the difference? You know, sometimes you feel that if somebody accepts me, that means he must he or she must agree with me all the time. But if somebody corrects you, he he, you know, your mom or your dad or your elders, you know, uh, uh, correct you, uncles and aunties. Even among us who are older, when we correct one another in love, right? We're not rejecting one another. Instead, we are loving one another. Okay? Because we don't want to see you hurt. Okay? So please, understand the difference between uh, correction and rejection. Okay? Please, we do understand this. Then you will be healthier for you. So Paul's conscience was clear. Okay. He was not interested to entertain people. He was not there to manipulate people, to guilt trip. But he calls a spade a spade. Yeah. Okay. And what he did was he was interested to please God. He was interested to see that the people souls being saved. That was his primary reason. Okay. Whether uh, whether it is in good times or you know, or whether it is in difficult times, he will continue to exert himself so that the gospel is preached. So in this case, I pray that our, as our church we continue to grow in maturity, uh, to, to to know our uh, the, the doctrine, you know, our grace, to know what grace looks like. Okay? We must 
None. Avoid trying to please man, and instead we should seek to please God. And when our message is correct, then when our conscience is clear before the Lord, yeah, and it is aligned in line with God's word, then we are pleasing God. Because there's only one way to the Lord. That's how critical the gospel is. Jesus plus nothing else. Secondly, okay, secondly, we find that you know, we need to respond okay, and to be clear about God's call and message. I've talked about the message already. But in this case, we need to be clear, as Paul was really clear, about God's call and message in food. God's call in his life and God's message for him to share with the Gentile world. You find in verse 11 and 12, he said this, I want you to know, brothers, that the gospel I preach is not something that man made up. Okay? The word I want you to know simply says that I want you to know with certain, uh, certainty. Uh, who, who was it? Uh, I think it was uh, Brother Quek who said it in, in, taught me in Mandarin. Ching ching chu chu, was it? Is that right? Is that, is that the right uh, pronunciation? I want to make it cert, uh, uh, known with certainty. You need to be very clear about this. Okay? Let me make it clear the gospel I preach is not man made, okay? it came from God. This is the standard okay, for judging. <coughs> All the man's theories of salvation. One of the discussion points that we raised up during our Bible study was that you know how does Chris, uh, uh, so-called uh, cults like Mormons, like like Jehovah Witness, you know, and and others that come after Christianity, you know, is there anything different about the way they teach it? One thing is very clear: you would find. Their teaching is always based on works, their salvation. Yeah? That means that they need to earn enough points, okay, very points, to gain them a place of acceptance by God. It is based on their works. Okay? But this gospel, yeah, if the if it was a main made gospel, okay, then it would cater for man's pride. It means that if I do this thing, I say, I feel good about myself. If I do this, if I give more money, then you know, then I will feel good about myself. You know, I think I will have a a a a, a, a sure place in heaven. You know, if I help the poor or, or uh, do do uh, more faith works and things like that, you know, then surely you know, my place in, in heaven will be even more secure. You know? that is the element. That that, that is the thing. If it's man man, it will cater to our pride. But the gospel says there is nothing, absolutely nothing you and I can do to earn the place of favor with God. It is only through Christ. Only through Christ. It is not a way that says, I did it my way. Right? Okay. Alright, some of the older folks know. Yeah. Frank Sinatra, is that right? Yeah, I did it my way. Yeah. Yeah, otherwise we, we, are not, we, would not, we cannot sing Amazing Grace. <laughs> okay? We'll be singing, I did it my way. Okay? okay? So this good news, my dear friends, is from the Lord. Yeah? It's not man -made. So it was not received from man. Verse 12, it says, I did not receive it from any man, no, I was taught it. Right? It was not from trad traditions. Yeah? Not like the Judaizers. Okay? And the Judaizers had tons of traditions. Okay? Tons of traditions. Uh, but here Paul says, the word, you know, you want to hear from God, read the Bible. Okay? All scripture is God read and is useful for teaching, okay? Preach, uh, teaching, rebuking, correcting, and training the man in righteousness. All scripture. Don't selectively, you know, just uh, pick up the passages that you like. That's why we encourage one another. We continue on. We started uh, those who were one on one with God. You know, I hope you are still continuing on with one and one with God, reading the, your, your your Bible passage uh, every day. Yeah, yeah. For those of us who have not started, start on the Bible study, uh, uh, the Bible reading program, okay. Old Scripture. 
Don't just depend on the traditions of men. See? Not even, you know, when you study the Bible, you know, uh, study the Bible, okay? you can read the commentaries for further information, but don't study the commentary. Make sense? Okay? That's why I'm encouraging, for example, the young adults, and even for uh, uh, you know, uh, other groups, you know, like I believe the young adults, as well as the millennium group, sorry, not, not millennium group, uh, the uh, Prima Veda group, right? they are going to the book of Galatians, study the book for itself. Okay? Yeah? So, continue to do that. Okay? There is no human source for Paul's message because it is from the Lord. Second Peter, let me read. You know, uh, uh, Second Peter, it says this. We have the prophetic message as something completely reliable, verse 19. To, uh, to Second Peter chapter one verse nineteen, we have the prophetic message as something completely reliable, and you will do well to pay attention to it, as to a light shining in the dark place, as the door, as the day dawns and the morning star rises in your hearts. Read the word of God until God gives you the understanding. Okay. Continue to ask the Lord. I'm so encouraged by, by some, some of the feedback I hear. You know, the, when we, uh, some of those were studying, uh, reading through the Bible, and say, Lord, please give me understanding. And they go in a lot of fear, a lot of, you know, uh, when, for example, you study Revelations. Yeah? But yet, if you really wait upon the Lord, you will gain something from Him. Don't give up. Yeah? Wait upon Him. Yeah? Until the day dawns, the morning sun rises in your heart. The prophets, no human, spoke from God as they were carried along by the Holy Spirit. And one area also to note in this same verse, yeah, in this same passage in verse 12, it says that the gospel is not from man, it's not from tradition, but it is directly from Christ. Okay? Directly from Christ. This is the word, God. Paul uses the word huh? apocalypsis, you know, which is basically revelation. Okay? It is an unveiling of a secret. Yeah? The angels long in the Old Testament wonder what is this secret. But, but in, 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 when Jesus came, you know, that what was hidden become revealed. What was hidden in the Old Testament becomes revealed in the New Testament, the grace of God. It was revealed to Paul on the road to Damascus. You can read about it in Acts chapter 9. Before that time, before the encounter with Christ, Paul persecuted the church. Paul denied the teachings of Christ. Paul denied the Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ. But after that encounter, it changed his life. You and I are here today, many of us are here today because we have had an encounter with the living God. Maybe not in such a dramatic way that we are driving down Miripujuk Highway and one day we see a flash and then uh, our car ended up in the drain. <laughs> okay. Yeah. okay, pray it will not happen. He was, uh, I think Paul was on a donkey that time. All right, okay, so uh, not much of an accident. Right. But, you know, you know, we would have encountered God in a very special moment. Most of the time. Okay. So, but on the road to Damascus, that veil of darkness, that ignorance was lifted from his eyes. That he got a revelation from God Almighty. And he was never the same. So God's God, sorry, the false gospel is not an invention from the mind. It is not from a tradition, from culture, uh, from Jewish culture, but it is by revelation from Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. So, in the next uh, from verse 13 to verse 17, we see another area that how the messenger is like. He was, Paul was compelled to preach. Paul was compelled to preach. Okay. Next slide. It says, when I preach the gospel, he said this, you know, in 1 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 16, it says, when I preach the gospel, I cannot boast since I am compelled to preach. Woe to me if I do not preach the gospel. If I preach voluntarily, I have a reward. If not voluntarily, I'm simply discharging the trust that is committed to me. So Paul sees the gospel you know, 
the messenger will see the gospel, and you and I will be entrusted with the gospel. We must see it as a privilege, as a trust. Okay? And also, that it is motivated, that compulsion is motivated not only by that privilege, but also an awesome sense of the love of God. Because Paul, if you hear or you read about his testimony, he said, I am not worthy to receive the love of Christ. I'm not worthy. I was a murderer. I was an extremist in today's time. You know? yeah? like, like what we, we, we read about you know, uh, in the burning of the, of the, and the behaviors. Yeah? He was like that. He was giving approval for people to be killed just because they bear the name of Christ. So Paul's compulsion was motivated by privilege and by the sense of love. For Christ's love, he would write in 2 Corinthians 1 verse, verse chapter 5, it says, Christ's love compels us because we are convinced that one died for all and therefore all died and he died for all so that those who live should no longer live for themselves, but for him who died for them and was raised again. His love, his direction, his, uh, his, his uh, compulsion, if you can say, is cross-centered. And you can see this in the way that he puts it in verse 13. He says that, You have heard about my previous way of life in Judaism, how I intensely persecuted the church of God and tried to destroy it. And everyone knew that the gospel was resisted and was enforced by the Jews. And Paul used to persecute the church, and now he defended him. Encountering Christ had transformed him, and God is still in the business of transformation. Amen? And that's what we're here. We are being continually being transformed more and more into the likeness of Christ, into the character of Christ. There's a change. There was a story. Some, some of us are uh, not sure. Uh, this is a very old story. It happened, it kind of happened in, uh, uh, in a particular island. There was a mutiny on an old ship. Okay? Even I think those who study history, they, they remember the mutiny on the bounty. Yeah? And, uh, and nine of the mutineers and six other men and 12 women were put on shore on a particular island called Pitkan in the 1790. And there, one of the sailors, you know, decide to make twop. Okay. They don't call it twop, huh? Okay. <laughs> they don't call it toli, yeah? They call it uh, moonshine. Heard of it? Yeah? Okay, hard liquor. And long after that, what happened was this, the whole colony ended up, you know, into debauchery, vice, and all of social problems. But 10 years later, there's only one sailor survived, surrounded by native women and, and, and children. And from that old chest, he discovered there was a Bible. So he took it out, he began to read it, and he began to teach it to the community. And what happened was that they ended in the in that uh, island in 1790, in 1808, this colony was discovered, rediscovered again. See? And it had become a prosperous community. There was no jail, there was no whiskey, there was no crime, there was no laziness. The Bible can transform one person, one after the other. It can transform the community. See? We are in this business, partnering with God to transform the community. This is part of our church vision as well. Okay. So you find that Paul said in verse 14, says about his former position, yeah, is it past? Okay. I was a high flyer. Can I put this way? Into this term. I was a high flyer. You know, I was advancing further in, Jer in, in Judaism beyond Jews of my own age. That means I was a high flyer in, in the religious circle. But yet, you know, he was proud. He was a rising star. He was proud of his religious training. He was proud of his zeal, his fervor, his, his uh, activities, his dedication. 
but yet he counted it all like loss, save the knowledge of knowing Christ. So he, he let it inspired. You know? Sometimes we feel you know, that because we made a serious mistake in the past, we are not no longer qualified. We are no longer entitled to share the gospel. We feel very shy. You know? But there was one brother you know, from Kuching. When he shared the gospel, he tell he tell others about his previous life. You know? And he said that I was like that. But this is how Christ has come, have changed me. Yeah? We're not perfect that yet. If we're perfect, we're already in heaven. Okay? <laughs> but don't allow your past, don't allow persecution to rob us from the joy, to rob us the power, you know, of uh, of sharing the gospel, from the joy of sharing the gospel. So he was compelled to preach in whatever circumstances. There was one young, young one young man who who came to church, yeah, not our church, you know, but uh, and and, and we were, when he was asked, you know, about you know his uh, experience of salvation, he said this. God done his part, I done my part. <laughs> so of course elders, you know, uh, pastors very serious now, you know, because you know what doctrine is this? Eh? <laughs> well, God do you do his part, you do your part, you know, you did it your way. <laughs> okay. So they asked him to explain a little bit more. And he says that what God's part, what was God's part and what was your part, you know? He said, God's part was the saving, my part was the singing. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I ran from him, you know, but he chased me down, you know, and, and brought me in, you know, and removed my sin, you know, uh, to keep it simple, you know. You know? Our part was the sinning, God's part was the sinning. If you want to preach the gospel, maybe that's a, that is enough, right? That's how we got saved. The good news is salvation by grace. The unmerited favor of God. Let me add another point since I'm on the road. Okay. Fourth point, last point. Okay. God, Paul, we recognize, was commissioned to preach to the Gentiles. In verse 15, he says this. Okay, chapter 1, verse 15 says, When God, who set me apart from birth, okay, and called me by His grace, you notice that formerly, in the previous days, he was talking about himself. Now there's a shift. No longer, talking, no longer talking about himself, his past. He's not talking about Christ, God, and God's grace in his life working. Okay? He is now in Christ. When you and I function in our everyday assignments, okay? not just your book assignment, but everything that you are, holding, you are doing you know, in every day, remember, you are no longer your own. You are born at Christ. You are in Christ. Okay? The God who set me apart from birth and called me, my, uh, called me by His grace was pleased to reveal His Son in me so that I may preach Him among the Gentiles. Here is the ultimate purpose of Paul's calling. It is not just for salvation alone, but it is for service. You and I, my dear friends, are saved to serve. And I'd like to add in some more. You are saved and shaped by God to serve in the place He has called you to be. Every believer, Ephesians 2 verse 10, is God's handiwork, created in Christ Jesus to do good works which God has prepared in advance for us to do. Yeah. Whatever, you know, no matter how crooked we are, you know, no matter how bent we are, God can still use a bad stick. Yeah. Paul said that I might preach him. That is the final object of God's call. That I might preach him. Not just a message, but a person. When you and I share the gospel, as an opportunity to share the gospel, we're not just saying, take it or leave it. You know? We're talking about a person. You're talking about Jesus Christ who loved you. You tell your friend, I know of someone who loves you more than I do. Okay? Who can be with you 
you know, my handphone battery dead. You cannot uh, can contact me. You cannot WhatsApp me, but you can call to him. Amen. Okay. <laughs> All right. Uh, which reminded me, I received a call last night, and I just saw a missed call from a pastor. Yeah, at eleven something. I forgot to call him back. Okay. <laughs> All right. Okay. Uh, pastors also have to sleep. Huh? <laughs> okay. All right. So yeah, it happens, you know. Uh, sometimes I'm in the middle of uh, WhatsApping a message, you know. Then I got distracted and I thought I sent out the message, and it sits there for one day, you know, still not sent in draft mode. Yeah. Uh, so I have to apologize to some of you. Eh? You know that, you know. You ask me a question, the pastor. I thought I sent it out, and then I said, "Oh my goodness." Okay. But if you don't receive anything from me, any response from me, please, do by, by all means, call. Yeah. Okay. Just in case. But typically, I just want to let us know. Eh? If I'm in a meeting, if I'm talking to people, I don't normally talk to my handphone. Okay, all right. I want to give the full attention to the person. Okay? When you're having lunch and others, you know, and going out with your friends, don't uh, don't glue just to your handphones. Uh -huh. Okay, be there. Okay, enjoy the moment. Right? Okay? Enjoy the moment. Okay. Then I'm preaching about them, the Gentiles, verse 16. Okay? God just didn't tell Paul who to preach and what to preach, but he told him where to preach. Okay? Yeah. Paul was sent to take God's message to Galatia. The churches in Galatia, okay, or the people in Galatia before he planted the church, yeah, did not need the traditions of the Jews to preach to them. When we share the gospel, you know, I don't talk about so much about the church. I said, you're welcome. You know, we have a wonderful church family here. I don't, talk, I don't run through the Baptist history with them. <laughs> you know, the Baptist history doesn't save a person. Okay? Yeah? The FGA history, the Roman Catholic history, the, the, uh, and things like that. The pastor's uh, life doesn't, have, doesn't save a person. But tell the person about Jesus Christ. They needed a savior to be preached to them. Okay? I, th I thought that football is coming, right? Or is it on already? I, I hear you know uh, whispers like uh, uh, matches of Manchester United and things like that coming on. Yeah. Can you imagine? Okay, for those football freaks, uh, yeah, fans. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. Like for us, they call it techno uh, techno uh, geeks or techno freaks. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> All right. You know, so, uh, so for example, this girl, this goalie, right? Okay, you know, this goalkeeper was just letting in all the goals, you know. Yeah. Okay. What would you, as a fan, would be shouting from the stand, or oh, from from in front of your in front of your TV screen, right? Take him out of the game, you know. Retire him, fire him, whatever. For goodness' sake, don't let him be there, right? <laughs> okay. All right. Now, you think about it. For us today, my dear friends, you know, what would Paul be saying you know, in heaven, looking at us today? What would he be saying to the Lord? Lord, you know, I suffered for you. I had the marks, your marks, you know, of suffering on my body where I was beaten for you. I was in chains for you. But Lord, you know, look at that man. Look at the woman, look at the child. You know? He has a gospel. He has a gospel. But yet he's afraid to share the gospel. He's afraid of offending his friends. He's afraid of getting rejected. He's afraid of being ridiculed. Lord, have mercy. Take him out of the game. <laughs> okay. You sometimes wonder ever why we die young. <laughs> uh, one, one, uh, there was one missionary, you know, one evangelist who said that I am immortal. Okay? He said, I am immortal as long as I am not finished preaching the gospel. But once my job is done, then God take me home. <laughs> Alright? So may we, and I, may you and I, continue to remain in the game. Alright? Continue to know that you have a clear conscience before God, to know the gospel, the simple fact that Jesus says, to know that you are called by God, to know that you are compelled you know, to preach the gospel 
not out of fear, but out of love, out of the sense, also the sense of privilege that you and I may fulfill the commission that Jesus has given to us. Stay in the game. Stay in business. Amen? Amen. God bless you. Father, we come with